Hi, I'm Chad. I'm an architect at Palantir. Recently, we published a blog that highlighted the Ontology Software Development Kit, or OSDK for short. Today, we'll explore how you can use the OSDK to build a custom SDK of your business. This will allow you to seamlessly integrate data, logic, and actions, along with LMs into your existing applications, create net new ones, even in mobile, or integrating your back office systems. All right, let's go build with OSDK. So video topics for today, what is those OSDK? So we'll define and take a look at how that fits into the bigger ecosystem. We'll actually go generate our own SDK on our Titan ontology, our demo environment. Um, and then we'll set up the security, we'll look at the internal web hosting. So we have a fully managed uh, web hosting for your application inside the platform, or you can have your own. We'll get into those details. Then documentation generation this is probably one of my favorite features of live documentation as your ontology in your business changes, your documentation auto generates. Uh, then we'll actually integrate into a React app, test that out in a iPad as well. Lots of stuff to cover. Okay, I know there's a lot going on here. The app to my right here, the Titan Control Tower, we built that in our last video because we had a fire at our Haynes Distribution Center, so we built a co-pilot using LLMs to help me respond to my supply chain emergency. It's great, I didn't short my customers, but now I need to assess the damage of the Haynes facility. So I'm gonna extend the ontology we built already as part of Titan to include tasking different uh, public satellites. We're gonna use LLMs to help me find the right satellite with the right imagery that I need. So you can see the React app running on the iPad above me here. We built this uh, on top of the OSDK, leveraging the same ontology I used for my Titan control tower. So I'm super excited about this use case. Let's go build. All right, quick diagram here from the blog post. We'll put a link to the blog post in the video notes for you. The ontology at the center integrates the data, logic, and action into a decision-centric model of your enterprise. So you can think of it as a digital twin, but not just of the data, also of processes, possible actions, uh, simulations. Again, so this means that an SDK of your ontology is an SDK of your business using the language of your business. Very cool concept. So let's take a look at what that means. If we go into our dev console here, this is actually where we create and manage SDKs, but you can see I have multiple SDKs. It's because I can have one ontology, that's the digital twin, the, the one version of the truth of how my business operates, create multiple SDKs on top of there for whether it's an integration or a custom app or a mobile app, all of those can be on that one version of the truth. Security and permissions all respected through the ontology. All right, we'll do this to show you kind of the concept. We're actually gonna go create one here and let me get my icon. So put a demo app, nice little icon in there for us and hit continue. So client facing applications. So there's two different distinct application types. The client facing application, think of that as user interfaces, one where people interact with it, whether it be on the web, desktop or mobile. A key point here is these applications are designed without the ability to store credentials for security reasons. Then we have the backend services. So think application servers, daemons, integrations, um, where I might need a service account to run on behalf of someone to move data around or do something for me. So I can select one or both depending on how I'm trying to architect my application. The idea, whenever you're selecting these options, we try to make it very real about how that impacts your overall security posture. So as we select these, we kind of give some real world examples. Similarly here, when we get into the user permissions and applications, so this comes back to data. So if I'm a user logging into this, your custom application and I'm accessing to the ontology, it's gonna pass my credentials based on your uh, Active Directory or your authentication uh, system into um, the, through the OSDK. So anything you have already built in the OSDK from a security and permissioning is respected. So I have access to a sub business unit only of financials when I access that application, whether it's inside the platform in a workshop app or through the OSDK, those permissions are respected. So I'm not having to rebuild permissioning schemes when I build custom applications. It's already there in the ontology. That's pretty cool. Then you have the application permissions. So again, if I need to have like a service account or something on the back end, So idea here is as I select these options, it's gonna show us in a real world example what that does. And so I know exactly what I'm exposing through this OSDK. All right, if we hit continue, we're gonna pick our uh, ontology. We're selecting the organization. You can see I have objects, actions, and functions. So let's add some objects in first. Uh, satellite, I have got some tasking, finished goods. Now let's see a manufacturing plant, put a few things in there. So you can see again, back to security, least privilege. I'm only giving access to explicitly what I wanted to have access to. Even these are just the data objects that are behind the ontology. So it's the data, the data component. 
I didn't expose the links between them or the actions you do or the functions. So I can select those later and we'll get into that in a minute. I can also add different action types in. So if we hit this, um, let's this function. So we're going to create a plant event, for example, this could write back to SAP. This could write back to a source system, take actions for me. So think about that. I got no SDK now that when I create these actions about how my business operates, this action is in the language of my business. Now it might go call an SAP boppy or some sort of technical backend to make some things happen. But now I'm programming in the language of my business through these actions. Same thing with functions. If I look here, I've got this one. This is actually a uh, AIP logic function. So an LLM back function that's going to help me later find the right satellite that we're trying to do um, to get imaging from. So pretty cool that I can now also expose functions here, LLM back functions as well um, through the OSDK. So if I want to integrate AI functions, write back all this kind of stuff into my existing applications, it doesn't have to be like a wholesale new, I can integrate into things I already have that brings the power of LMs, AI into your existing enterprise ecosystem. Very cool. All right, the last part here, you can just review. Um, and it helps you understand like, what are things that I can change later? What are one way door decisions? What are two way door decisions? Okay, I can add more objects later, I can add the links in, we'll do that in a minute. So I can hit create application, it'll go create it for me. All right, hopefully that gives you kind of an overview of what the OSDK is. Let's go jump over here real quick and knock that off the list. So we're actually gonna go generate our own and dive deep into an SDK for a specific use case. Okay, so before we actually build out the SDK, this is the ontology we're gonna build it upon. So the blue is part of the Titan ontology that we use for the Titan control tower and that we built the co-pilot on last time. We've added the green objects in our things I've added. So plant events, when we had a fire, the sensor tasks telling me I need this type of imagery uh, at this location. And then we have satellites that actually can co get those. So I've added these objects and action types into the Titan ontology. Pretty cool that I can start the flywheel now. I can move quicker because as I expand out the ontology and truly build that digital twin of my business, now I'm just able to add incremental things in and leverage them across my entire enterprise. Very, very neat. So if we put it all together, what we're gonna actually build here, we'll have a React application that hits the Ontology SDK. That's gonna have access to the Ontology um, for data like we were showing. But we're also gonna have an AIP logic function that's gonna help me find the right satellite. So we'll take a look at that real quick. Um, won't spend too much time here, but this is gonna take us, I've got a location. It's gonna help me find based on the intent of what I'm looking for. So it's gonna know, go look, oh, there's a plant event, there was a fire. How do I reason through that I need RGB uh, infrared and thermal. So it's actually going to help me find that and find a satellite that meets, you, meets those requirements that's in a path in the near future for me. So it's going to go through all of that reasoning, looking at the different public satellites we might have access to and help us find and create a task for it. Pretty neat. All of that coming back together, we need to build the SDK. So we have this SDK. I already went through a lot of this and we kind of showed you, but the idea here is the application SDK, as we had added in our kind of creation, we have access to these different objects. Now we've given access to different links. So the satellite is related to a sensor a task. A sensor task is related to a distribution center in this example, right? So pretty slick, it's easy. You can see here, I can also add in more. So these SDKs are not static. They can evolve with the use case as you develop. Again, least privilege, I'm only giving access to what it needs. Um, from a data, a links, a functions, actions, right? All that's in here. So if we just click on this, you can see now I'm going to give it access to the links to distribution and manufacturing plant. I want to give it uh, the ability to go create this. So this is a function that I can make a callback. Now this function can again call SAP or right back to some source system. And then we have access to the function. So this is that LLM backed uh, function that we just looked at. So all that's in here. Then if I want to generate, come in here and I can hit generate. That is going to generate the package. So an NPM package, if I want to create an, a React app with TypeScript or PIP for Python, I even have some curl requests, uh, all sorts of stuff we can do in here. Uh, but as simple as generate, you can also version these out and have that very, very neat. If we come back over here real quick, website hosting. So this is fully managed uh, hosting of these uh, web apps inside of the platform. So if you've got a, a skill set where you would need to build a custom application, but you want to leverage ontology, the security that, you know, the strong type safety that the ontology gives you, 
cool. You can build the application, host it in here, and give people access to it, whether it's on their mobile or inside your intranet or out on the web. You have all those different options. Very, very cool. All right, last but not least, my favorite thing, the auto-generated documentation. So you can see here, this documentation is generated based on the ontology, the object types, actions, um, and it gives me the ability to pick what language I want to have it in, whether it's in Python, curl, or TypeScript. So it's going to give me um, these examples, but it's the exact example of how I'm going to load a specific object. So if I click on satellite and I want to get a page of satellites, here's the code to go do it. Oh, wait, actually, I need that in Python. Awesome. As I change my ontology, the objects and all of those evolve with my business, this documentation is live on top of those objects. So again, I have an SDK that auto documents my ontology, it auto documents my business um, and how we interact. And then similarly, I can have these different action types, but how I call those, or even the LLMs. It's very, very cool. Now I can call an LLM back function straight from ontology SDK and TypeScript. It's pretty neat. All right. So we kind of walk through what all of that looks like, how we interact. Let's go back here, check that off our list. Now we need to go build the actual app and integrate it. All right, so let's go build this in an application. So you see we got VS Code open here. Uh, we have the SDK that we've installed. Pretty simple. We get a readme about the steps we can take to get that running and install. Very, very simple. So let's collapse this down and take a look at what this might look like. So if you want to have an example here, let's just do client uh, dot ontology. You can see I have a couple different uh, uh, options here. So I have um, the action. So let's go take a look. I can create the sensor task, for example, or a new action. So anything I expose through the SDK, I can now leverage right in here, even with autocomplete. And you can see the documentation about how to make this call. Very, very cool that all that feeds all the way through. Similarly, if I go to uh, objects, I can see the different object types. So satellites, sensor tasks, distribution uh, centers, all of these objects that I'm exposing along with the documentation about how to go use them are right here. And then last but not least we can do queries and this is actually how we would call like an lm function pretty simple if we actually look over here real quick in the documentation again i can just copy and paste this code about loading a single distribution center or a page of them straight into my vs code and start using them or call this for the satellite um, lm function very very slick come jump back over to code here so we're gonna just put this back and we're going to have ontology.objects. We're at distribution center.page. And we are going to uh, get the first 100 objects. Huh. There we go. And we're not going to do any sorts or anything fancy right now. Um, so we'll hit save. And if we actually click over on our application, you can see localhost, it's blank here. So if I actually come down here to my terminal and run this, you will see that we'll get our web app um, on our iPad simulator. Pretty slick. All right, so that's up and running. Let's go see it. So there we go. So now when that call I just put in there is giving me this list of distribution centers to be represented. Now I've got satellites moving and I want to go zoom in and look here. So. Um, my Haynes facility, I'm going to get on a plane later and go take a look at Haynes, but I want to have some satellite imagery to see what's going on. So here's my, ha uh, my Haynes medical supplies. I want to create a task for that. Uh, I'm going to use this, and this is actually going to call the LLM function. So now this is navigating the ontology on my behalf, looking at the plan events, what's going on. Um, so it knows that it has a fire. Okay, I've got to go uh, find a satellite that's going to go over that path in Mountain View that has the sensors that I need um, to assess the damage from a fire. Very cool. All right, awesome. Got me a satellite, uh, satellite 52174, and I can hit save here. So when I do this, it's actually going to write back to the ontology, create um, this sensor uh, tasking object. Now that could have a webhook to an API to a satellite provider. It could go back to SAP, wherever that needs to go. So I've created that, and again, it wrote back to the ontology and immediately populated the application because the taskings are part of the OSDK. So if we actually go back and look uh, here, we are going to 
actually look at that object itself. So there wasn't any before. If I hit refresh, you can see here, we're going to see that tasking object that we actually just created through the application. All right, there we go. So if we actually click on this one, this is the tasking object we just created. There's the satellite, got the links, all rich in ontology, the right permissions. Very, very cool stuff. So you can see how I can integrate this into an existing application or create these new ones. Its possibilities are really endless. All right, that checks everything off the list. All right, that's the content for today. I hope you enjoyed building with the OSDK. Ontology-oriented software development with the OSDK is a whole new paradigm that allows you to move faster, more securely, because engineers and business users are aligned around the representation of the business rather than the representation of the underlying individual systems and components and how they might fit together. All right, see you next time.